All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Matt's Mindset Monday. And today I have a really good friend of mine and co-worker and special guest. But uh, I'm going to introduce her here in just a second. We're super excited about uh, today's episode because it's all about growth. And as you all know, I live stream this on my club growth page. And um, it's really about not only uh, you know professional growth, but also personal growth and development as well. And, and today's topic is going to be more on the professional side, although I'm sure like we always do, we get into a little bit of mindset. Uh, but today is all about growing a business and scaling a business in particular. So there's really every entrepreneur takes kind of three steps or three phases into building a building a business. First, they get the idea and they do what's called a startup. That's when you're, you're first launching and you're taking the ideas that you had in your head or, or whatever business that you choose to pursue. And, and you're really building that business from the ground up. So there's a lot of things that you have to put in place, the infrastructure, if you will. Then you get into growth mode. Ideally, you, you built your business on a great foundation and you start growing. And, and that's where, you know, you usually find where you have to go from entrepreneurial to purposeful, meaning that, you know, it's just you, maybe just you in the beginning. And then you have to start bringing on staff because, you know, ideally the business is growing and the workload's growing and there's only so much that one person can do. So you have to bring in the, you know, the leverage, like is what I say, and it can be technology, it can be systems. Systems, it could be people. There's a bunch of different terms of, of uh, leverage out there. And then you hit scaling. And scaling and growth can, they, you know, scaling can kind of be cliche sometimes, but uh, in terms of the way that the word's used, but scaling and growth, they do kind of go hand in hand, but there is a really big difference. When you're in growth phase, it's when you're putting in that baseline infrastructure. It isn't until you hit the scaling phase where it really, the models and systems come into play so that you can be as efficient as possible. And it's not necessarily just about adding more and more people, inventory, or expenses, but it's really about optimizing everything and, and making sure that you stay consistent so that as your business grows and grows, you know, hourly in this direction, and, and maybe you're even moving to different territory, that the same standards and practices and, and the things that you did whenever you first launched your business are scalable across multiple platforms, multiple people, maybe even multiple locations. So uh, to teach us a little bit about scaling, to have a great conversation with us today, I'm going to bring on my special guest and good friend, Rachel Brantingham. And she uh, is not only uh, have a division of customers, home builders that her and her family um, has built that she'll tell you about. That is Brantingham Builders, but she also is a, a fantastic and amazing real estate agent with the Brantingham Group out of Keller Williams Heartland. So welcome, Rachel. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, let's kick this off with just tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? Well, thank you so much, Matt, for inviting me to be on today. I'm really excited about this opportunity to be here with you. Uh, as well as our guests. So a little bit about me. Um, so I'm 32. I'm a mother to two wild and crazy little boys, uh, Maximus, who's five, and Alexander, who's two. So they're my absolute world. They keep me very, very busy outside of work. Um, past that, I'm from a big family of entrepreneurs, actually. I got to grow up and watch my parents do exactly what you just talked about, do a startup, watch them struggle, watch their growth. And then I watched them and learned from their mistakes on how they scaled their custom home building business. And I'm lucky enough to have become a partner and actually a part owner of their business. And now my brother and I are continuing that. So come from a big family of entrepreneurs. I've got seven siblings. So there's a, there, and we're all in the home business. Some of us, we've got a mortgage lender. We've got a painting company that started from the fam. We've got insulation uh, owner. He owns an insulation company. So we, you can imagine what family dinners are like. We all um, talk about housing. So about, but, sure uh, that's just a little bit. At all at those dinners. <laughs> None, not whatsoever. The, the goal is to not talk about work. We'll get into it. And then we're like, wait, pause. We can't talk about work anymore. Like we actually have to talk about something else. So, but other than that, I'm, I, I mean, it's spending time with family and friends for me. I mean, I'm very family oriented and love to be outdoors with my kids. So it's a little bit about me. So real quick, this just made me think of something because me and my wife um, talk about this all the time is uh, she said, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm gonna raise my hand. This is me. Like I'm so much like entrepreneurial mindset. Like I like think it, live it, 
you know, breathe it all the time. But sometimes at dinner, she's like, Hey, you know, put the phone down. Let's, let's have it. Let's have a, let's have a yeah. normal husband wife conversation. Cause she runs her own business also. So we kind of talk about that, but I think it's yeah. important to have that separation to be able to turn that button off as much as I struggle to do it. I think it's important because that helps avoid burnout. So just out of curiosity, and we didn't even prep for this question, but is that, what's the purpose yeah. of not talking about business with your family? Well, it, it's fun in that we can talk about it because it become became more of a lifestyle for all of us, right? It's It bleeds into every aspect and, and each of us have different, though we are in the same category of business, we all have different roles and all have different opportunities. So it is hard because, you know, we're all like, oh my gosh, what are you into right now? You know, so of course I'm like, hey, what, what's your newest investment? So, but there is, you know, there is time where we're like, hey, you know, let's turn that off. So uh, for me, it's a fine balance because, and you can usually sense it, like we'll talk about it for a little bit and then we're like, okay, now how are you doing personally? So but, about Magnus and Alexander, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. And I would say, so there's six grandkids now to be eight soon. My sister's expecting twins. So, you know, there's enough chaos when we get together you can imagine there's like 20 some 25 people when we're all together with spouses and grandkids now so there's enough where we talk about it for a little bit and we all enjoy it and it's such a passion to us that it's not really work but then you know there's obviously enough time where we're like okay enough with that let's talk about the kids and life outside of that so I love it I love it well let's talk a little bit about work we're going to do the opposite yeah. of that awesome so, so obviously, you know, I've got to know you since you started the real estate journey uh, when you when you joined our office, and uh, I've had the pleasure of watching your business really scale at, at a really fast rate. Um, you know, and me and you have met and talked about that a lot, and, and kind of I've got to get a front row seat to your journey, which has been absolutely amazing. But for our viewers who who may not know uh, know you personally or, or be familiar with the Brantingham, you know, either the builder side or the real estate group side. Um, um, tell us a little bit about, you know, some of the accomplishments that you all have had. Yeah. So obviously I was born into a family of builders. So at a very early age, I remember probably my earliest memory is like six, seven, eight years old, being out with my dad, watching him work. You know, he would pay me um, to pick up brick. He'd pay me to clean up the job sites. And so very, very early, I established this mindset of like, I want to make money. Right. And so he showed me how hard work. And I mean, and he, I mean, he built for multiple people in our community. So established a really, really strong um, character, a strong company that had a good name for itself. So I was, a, had a front row seat to all of that. Right. So then I, right before I got married, I actually knew I was going to be moving. And so I left the family business, which was a big, you know, heartbreaker for me because I loved it so much. I mean, I grew up in and around the construction industry, the smell of new paint. My dad, I actually went to college and studied architecture. So I have that background as well. I had played with interior design, worked with lots of different clients on the design standpoint. So then it was like, you know, I need something that I can uh, move to Lexington and do. And I couldn't take my family's company there with me. So I actually stepped into Panera Bread and over a five-year process, got to learn a lot of like the corporate side of business. So I moved up with them. I started just as a regular hourly employee and then um, ended up becoming a general manager with them. And then ultimately went into being a market training manager, which was really cool because I got to see lots of different roles of business and they exposed me to the corporate side of things. And then I got to work with people and developing and mentoring people. And that was probably my favorite part. I mean, I loved, um, I loved working in the trenches alongside the other employees, um, you know, obviously accomplishing a task and getting it done. But the big thing for me was when I stepped into that general manager role and got to see developing people. So then I came back to the family business. Um, I had an opportunity to move up with Panera further and it just wasn't my heart. My heart was back on those job sites. And so I called my parents one day and I was like, guess what? Like, I think I'm going to commute an hour back and forth from Louisville and get right back to building homes. So came back, they just welcomed me right back in. And at that point, it was interesting because at that point, my dad was sort of in the down phase. Like he said, you know, uh, my career is, I'm getting older, like I'm kind of ready to slow down. And uh, I kind of popped back up into his world and was like, hey, let's get going. So since I came back to the business, we have jumped right back into scaling. He did it once and now he's doing it again. So 
we, you know, he had slowed to building, you know, two to five houses a year. Um, and since I've jumped back in the business where we're doing, you know, uh, 10 to 15 custom, large custom homes uh, a year in our community. And I would say we're among the top custom home builders here in Hardin County. So I love that. That's a huge part of what I do. So then about, um, about four years ago, um, my dad came up to my desk and here I was seven months pregnant, right? Perfect time to start real estate. So he walks up to my desk and he said, you know, I think you've got the personality and you've got the drive, like you should consider real estate. And he was like, you know, it would just add a whole nother component to bringing him builders. And of course I thought he's crazy. Like, I don't need another thing. I'm about to be a mama for the first time. Like they have no time for this. Um, but he is usually right. And I can't thank him enough for really pushing that pressure on me. I jumped right into classes and then um, with a baby on the hip, I got my real estate license and passed my test. And it took about a year working with another agency before I found Keller Williams. And my first meeting with Keller Williams, I walked out and it wasn't even like a, should I do this? It was like, okay, when do we get started? It was exactly where I wanted to go. I knew that more than just being a real estate agent, I wanted to own a business inside of real estate. So my goal was, you know, finding a, um, a, a team that would support that in like in our first conversation, you guys didn't even know me. And it was like, hey, what are your goals? And OK, awesome. We can match those. So then actually last May, my five year goal of starting a real estate team, um, I hired a MAPS coach, a mastery coach that kind of worked and developed me. And I told her on our first call, I was like, I want a real estate team in the next five years. And she said, um, how about in six months? And so seriously, in six months, May of last year, I started the Brainingham Group real estate team. And I now have an executive assistant, a transaction coordinator, and I now have my first agent on board and I'm looking to add four more by the end of the year. So really just lots of things happening. I went from um, the year before I sold about five and a half million to last year, I sold 15 million. And my goal for this year is to double that. So I want to, I want, I'm, I'm shooting for 30 million this year. So it's just been my real estate career in four years has just been so much fun. So fulfilling. Um, and you guys, I mean, Keller Williams has been a huge part of making that happen for me. So. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, and we're so proud of everything that you're accomplishing. You know, the thing that I heard as you were telling the story and something that, that I know about you, uh, you know, personally is um, how much you care about people. And um, we're going to get into this a little bit later, but I think that that experience with the corporate side of things combined with your passion for people development, you know, is, is what has led you to success. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But first, we always have to dive into one of these with a little bit of mindset. So um, I know how strong your mind is and the grit and determination that you have. And it's 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 one of those like, hey, I'm, I'm going to win no matter what, because you believe in yourself, right? So so tell, yes. tell our audience a little bit about about, you know, why you consider yourself to be successful in business and, and how much of an impact mindset plays on that. Absolutely. So mindset is everything. I mean, every day in business as in any in any form form that you're in. So, you know, whether you're a real estate agent or not, I mean, you're going to run into a million road bumps and roadblocks and you're going to have to reassess. I mean, I think that's what real estate is all about. It's problem solving, right? And one of the biggest things for, for us as real estate agents is burnout. I mean, it, it's very hard to like keep that big goal in mind, right? One of the books that like really transformed that for me, um, I can't recommend this book enough. The one thing, you know, it's finding your big why, you know, at the end of the day, what is your motivation? Because there will be days where you just run out. Your tank is empty, especially if you're developing other people, you know, um, and now that I have a team, you know, I'm developing new agents. And if I'm not working on my deals, I'm talking to them, right? I'm touching them. I'm making sure that they understand what they're doing and where they need to be focused on and that kind of thing. So it's constant conversation. By the end of the day, you can feel pretty exhausted. And it's like, wait a minute, why am I doing this? So I really encourage you to find your big why. Find, find it and put it up in front of you. One thing I did a year ago is, and this works for me, I took my bathroom mirror. I stare at my mirror every day when I wake up. 
I stare at my mirror before I go to bed. I, you know, brush my teeth before I head out to work or go touch up my makeup. It's right there in front of me always. And I put on my mirror several things that were my goals for last year. And one of them in big bold lettering was 15 million. If you had told me a year and a half ago that I would sell 15 million last year, I thought it was impossible. You know, I'm running one of the largest or helping to run one of the largest custom home builders in Hardin County. And then my coach said, hey, what's your goal for real estate? And I said, I sold five and a half the year before. I'd like to sell 10. And she said, let's make that 10, 15. She said, I know you are capable of it. You just have to believe that you're capable of it. So, and I did, man, I put that on my bathroom mirror. I put it in front of me everywhere I looked. I put it on my screen, on the background of my phone. And I knew that it would take a lot out of me. I knew it was going to be hard, but I created my why. So my why is my boys. My why is the legacy that I want to leave my children. So my parents have created this awesome legacy. They left me with a business to take over. And I want to do the same thing for them. I'm a single mom. And so there's nobody else like, that it's just me over here. So in, at the end of the day, when I am worn out, when I'm tired, when it feels too hard, that's, I, I sit down and I look at them, obviously, because they're, they're with me. And it's like, you know, it's not too much. It's not too hard. It is possible. And then at the same time, I have this awesome mentor, this awesome coach who's telling me the exact same thing. So I think, you know, that's very important. Find your why and then surround yourself with people who are going to help you find the roadmap to get you there and are going to remind you every single day, hey, this is why you're doing it. This is where you're going. You're getting off track. You're burning yourself out in this area. That's not going to that's not going to take you where you want to go. I had approached Ashley um, about a month ago with this business idea and I had thought it all through and I was ready to get going and Um, She said, that's not going to take you where you're trying to get. She said, let's go back to what your real, your real goals are and what you really want to achieve. And it's like, that's a detour that's going to waste your time and energy and it's just going to exhaust you and it's not going to take you where you're wanting to go. So I think those things are really important. Find your why and find the people that are going to support you and keep you on track. Yeah, so I, I love what you're doing with the bathroom mirror. I actually didn't know you were doing that, but I do the same thing. And actually, me and my wife started that this year. So we've always done vision boards, right? So we've been doing vision boards for years. And yeah. we, we started doing vision boards together maybe three years ago, me and her, two or three years ago. And then this year kind of added awesome. that extra element. I got it from um, Dana Gentry, actually. She like takes a picture of her vision board and hangs it like all these different places. So she's always seeing it. Um, oh, including, cool. She even has it in yeah. her car. Like when she pulls down the mirror in her car, that's what she sees. So I was like, oh, yeah, how do I really constantly cool. get reminded of what my goals are, what my dreams are and what my vision is. And that's one thing because we all start the day, you know, in front of the bathroom. Most of us end the day in front of the, in the bathroom mirror as well. So I love that. And I think you, you touched on something that I, I don't want to get lost in there is, um, the, everybody's heard this you're the sum of the five people that you surround yourself with and I think that it would it be safe to say I don't want to put words in your mouth but would it be safe to say that if you didn't have people a pushing you so your, your father pushing you to get into real estate and then other people that are in the office or your coach making sure you stay in alignment because I heard you say I had this business idea I ran it past my coach and and she said hey you know this isn't the direction you need to go because it deviates from what our vision and our goals are how important it is, is it to have those type of people around you to make sure you stay so laser focused I wouldn't say it's just important. I would say it's essential. Um, You know, I'm I'm humble enough to admit that I would not be in this position without the people that I surround myself with that coach me and develop me and also stop me from doing things that are off of that path, right? Um, I I tend to be a go-getter and I will just get lost in these tangents that take me off path. So, you know, my dad, you know, if he hadn't been there pushing me to do real estate at seven months pregnant, I I probably would have never done it. And now as I've become a single mom over the last couple of years, you know, being able to support my family, like that's because of him really having a life by design. Like I have the flexibility to be there when my kids are sick. So I would say it's not just important. It's essential. Really focus in on who you're surrounding yourself with everyone can't go where you're going. You're only going to take a few select people with you. Um, And so when you're spending your time, even outside of work, the conversations that you're having over dinner, the people you're spending, you know, your Friday evenings with Saturdays with Sundays with, if you really want to go somewhere with your life, you need to be really cautious about who that circle is and narrow it down to the people that are going to go with you where you're trying to get. 
I love that. It's so spot on. Uh, so tell me a little bit about this transition from the builder world to the real estate world. I mean, I know your dad came up to you and, and had that conversation and thought that was a good idea. What was it that clicked in, in your mind that, where you're like, yes, I have to go this this route is, I guess, part A. And then part B, tell us what it was like starting up in the beginning. Yeah. So people are obviously my passion. Like I, I love mentoring and developing and my role in the building business was, was already doing some of this. I was the sales manager. So I met with everyone that came in the door and then I did the interior design piece, which is walking someone through the transaction, right? It's making, helping them make the big decisions that are overwhelming to them. Well, when I got into real estate and I started um, watching and picking up what all these agents were doing, it was the exact same thing, right? It's handling the sales portion of it, but then walking them through the biggest, scariest transaction of their life. And I, I love that about real estate. I love my first time home buyers. Like my first time home buyers are so much fun because, you know, there's so much nerve, there's so many nerves that come with the process. Whether you're buying a million dollar home or a hundred thousand dollar home, it's the biggest transaction that you've probably ever had. And so I feel like and in this position, it's the greatest opportunity for me to mentor and develop and coach and hold people's hands, nerves and the, the things. And I kind of feel like I'm their gladiator, right? Like I'm in the, I'm down in the fight. I'm, I'm making sure to protect them. So there's a couple things it does for me. I just, I, I it's so much fulfillment comes from it. Um, as soon as I got a taste for it, I was like, man, this is, this fits my personality so well. And it also fit hand in hand with my background. I know homes, you know, better than most agents in my position. So I know what's behind the walls. I know what's in the footers and what's in the foundation. So it gave me kind of launch pad. So once I realized that those mirrored each other very similarly, and that it was such a passion to me to help people, then it was like a no brainer, right? Then I was like, okay, I want to scale this thing. And it really quickly became, okay, like, I mean, I'm not going to lie, the hunger came in, right? And then it was like, I set these goals for myself. I remember my first year, I got to the million dollar benchmark and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm a million dollar agent. Like I never thought that possible. No one told me it was possible. I, I just was out there just learning. And, but it all came from a growth mindset. The whole thing was like an opportunity to grow further. I, I was very learning based, you know, still am. I want to attend every event I can. I want to read every book because I want to be the best version of myself for my, my clients. So it was like a no brainer. I knew that real estate was something that I was going to love. And it's, so, it's been so true. I'm competitive. And so it just kind of naturally came to be a startup thing. I said, okay, you know, and when I got with Keller Williams, that was when that really be, started becoming true for me. Keller Williams had the roadmap, right? They made it possible. They, they showed me that it was doable, that the things that I wanted for my life where I could achieve if I did X, Y, and Z. And so that's one of the reasons I am so passionate about Keller Williams and love being here in this brokerage, working with the people I am. Everyone's team, you know, on the same exact team. So it was just a real simple, I mean, it was like, man, I'm going to grow. Let's do this. Because I also wanted, I, you know, that favorite part of uh, Panera was the training and development. So doing the team was just the obvious step to getting back to doing more of that teaching and development. So, and that's where the startup came from. Yeah, I love that. And we're going to get into, you know, how you scaled and some questions around scaling here in a second. But I think there's there's one key point here that, you know, a lot of people when they get into the industry, we have a, a huge failure rate. I mean, like, you know, uh, NAR mm -hmm. stat is 80% of people who get into real estate are out of the business within two years. And, um, you know, luckily, yeah. Uh, our office has been able to significantly improve uh, those statistics and we have more success stories than, than the general average, I guess, if you will. And I think part of that is because we have that roadmap of here's the things that you have to do on a daily basis. Uh, here's how you time block for it. Here's when you do it, why you should do it at that time. And really building out that 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 opportunity map or that that business map and that model of what makes people successful. And then from there is just habits, right? And getting into the habits yes. and things like that. Uh, I know we have some people on here that that are newer agents who are who are starting out. Um, what is really quickly just one piece of advice that you would give somebody who's in that startup phase and then we'll talk about scaling from here forward. 
create that roadmap. I think, you know, there, well, there's two pieces. I, it's hard to narrow it down to one thing, but I would really get clear on what that roadmap is and create um, habits. Just like you said, it's, it's lead gen, you know, so lead gen has to be your number one priority and then follow up and conversion, right? So, you know, make that lead gen the very most important thing you do in your day. Um, so good habits. And then the second thing I would do is I would find a mentor, a coach, someone who is going to hold you accountable, I, you know, in almost every aspect of my life. Um, if I want to lose weight, I need someone to hold me accountable. If I um, if I need to, you know, I, I'm, I'm working on my relationship with God. So I have someone who is doing Bible studies with me. I, You know, I feel like at each phase of our lives and in each aspect, we need someone who's already done it, been there, knows that it's possible and can look back and say, hey, you've got this. So uh, those are the two things. Create really strong habits that you just, without question, every single day, you spend that first part of your day lead genning. Then you're following up with people. Then you're converting. You're actually working on those transactions. And then the second thing is find a coach or a mentor and make weekly check-ins with them to hold you accountable to the things that you've set for yourself. I love that. I love that. And we did. Um, I had a fantastic coach on our uh, one of our previous episodes. So uh, I'm going to do a shameless plug here. If you want to know more about coaching, check out Matt's Monday Mindset on Coaching with uh, my good friend Josh Nungesser as well. So what is the biggest difference in startup versus scaling for you in your business? Like what? what how, yeah. did, how did you differentiate from, OK, I'm no longer a startup and now I'm scaling? Right. So startups are, I mean, just as you described them earlier there, you had this great idea, right? So I wanted to be a real estate agent. Um, then it was like, how do I get leads? How do I start this thing and get this thing moving forward? So that's a startup, right? It was just the very foundation and base level. I got to a certain level of sales and it was like, okay, now I've got some proven success. Now I know that I, as long as I continue to do what I'm doing, that I can convert this and actually start to scale it. Of course, with a lot of communication with you, a lot of communication with my real estate coach, that was when we established that, hey, you, you're you there. I, I wrote down some notes here to kind of help me. So startup is a newly established business working towards a positive margin, right? So you're leading with revenue at every step of the way. So if you're not making a certain revenue, you probably need to continue just working on your real estate. Or like, if, like I said, if you're in a base level startup somewhere not in the real estate world, same. Like you're just trying to get everything organized, right? You're creating your processes and procedures. You need to have a, a, a manual that you're going by. That's kind of that startup phase. From there, a scaling is when you have succeeded in establishing your values and proven your viability, and now you're ready to grow, okay? So, uh, you know, there was a, a phase where, you know, I sold five and a half million and I was well on my way. I, I had set the metrics to, to sell 15 million that next year, and I was proving month over month that I was going to hit that goal. And it was at that point that it was like, all right, let's do this. Um, so, you know, knowing when you're ready to start that scaling process. Yeah, I love that. And treat it like a business. So uh, I find a lot of people were in sales, right? So, you know, they, although I don't, it's not a sales job to me. We're in, we're in the, the consulting, really. advising um, role more than sales, um, you know, but, but still it, it, when most people come to this and think that they're a salesperson, be a business owner, right? Like own a business, yes. like run a PL, have a budget, like know how much money you're spending. If you're not getting a four to one return on every dollar that you're spending, then what do you need to do in order to do that? And that's that's one of the things that, that we're so blessed with the models of the MREA to be able to teach us things like practice red light, green light. And, you know, is my money working smartly for me or is it costing me money with no return and, and being able to do those things. So I think that's spot on. And then beginning, you have to establish those things so you can get into the scale phase and have, you know, there's different things. Like I woke up when I was scaling my, my real estate team Me and Shelly woke up one day and we were, you know, $10 million producers. And then all of a sudden we wake up and a year later, we're selling 30 plus million. And we look at our reserve account and we went from six months worth of reserves to one month. And it's like, Oh, wow. Like, you know, we just, cause the growth right. is so exponential. So, you know, those types of things, when you have really good models, you can help avoid, um, you know, those are things that I, that I found in, in my stumbles along the way is just sometimes when you go fast, you know, things can get a little out of whack and you got to re you got to have those base systems and models in the beginning so that when you do scale, you don't fall behind on certain things. So um, yeah, I love everything you said there. So you've grown your business exponentially. What tips would you give us for scaling at the speed of someone like yourself? 
Um, so some of the things, right? So it's not going to be easy, right? You're going to have setbacks, kind of like what you said. You need to have those processes and procedures to fall back on at the end of the day. There's been some painful lessons that I've learned and I've had to go to my coach and say, okay, now, now what, now what? And I think that that's just an, an inevitable part of business. You're going to, you know, there's shifts and changes to the market that you're going to have to fluctuate with. So I think prepare and know that just because you have gone from a startup and you've proven your viability doesn't mean that as you start scaling, you're not going to run into those hard times or those hiccups and have to kind of rethink and move around them. Um, always lead with revenue. Um, you know, I, I, my coach has just drilled that into me. She said, let's look at our bottom line. Are you ready to make that? You know, I called her the other day and I was like, I'm ready to add a marketing person. I really want somebody to do my marketing. And she said, um, actually, we've set a plan and you're a little bit off from that plan. We got to wait just a little bit longer. So brush up on your marketing skills because you're going to do it yourself for a little while longer. Um, and, and I appreciate that because like you said, you know, balancing that the, the, the bottom line is the most important part of, of growing, right? Um, leverage, that was a big thing for me. You know, I run two businesses and I have to be in two places at once. So knowing who to bring on your team and when to do it is a big part of scaling. You're not going to be able to scale alone. You're not going to be able to handle the growth that you're going to do by yourself. So who you bring onto your team and, and the wisdom that they're going to bring with them, the, the background that they bring with them, that's all going to be essential. And I, you know, I have been so blessed. I added a, an executive assistant who Anytime I was feeling overwhelmed or like this is impossible, they were there to be like, no, it's not. You've got this, you know, and she with her training and development has added such a huge part to my world, as well as my transaction coordinator. And whether that's, you know, I'm looking to do some um, bringing some people that are just like online support. So, you know, whether it's that way you want to scale and that way you want to grow, but know that you're going to need leverage. And then I think the next step is really to start building your brand. Who are you? Um, and be very clear about what you want people to know about your brand. Um, you are the brand, you know, as the leader of your team, you're going to set that standard. And so as I'm bringing people on and new agents, I'm setting the standard for what that brand speaks to the public. And I, through really smart marketing, am trying to create that. Um, and then, of course, continue adapting and innovating, I, especially in um, real estate. I mean, Things are ever changing. Technology is coming out. And of course, with the market ever shifting, know that you're going to have to be on top of adapting and innovating to continue scaling and growing and, and being successful. I love that. And I love what you said about brand. And it's not just brand. It's also culture of the environment of, of, of your of your organization internally. Right. Like so making sure that you're making those hires and that you're you're creating the culture of growth, because that's a as leaders, that's ultimately on us. The culture of our companies is 100 percent dictated by the the culture that we set first and then second to that is the people that we hire and bring into the organization are they a fit inside the culture that we're trying to achieve and if not then we have to make adjustments right because culture is one thing that i found yes. that it could only you could have a big organization with you know 30 plus staff you know 100 people employees and and it only takes a couple and all of a sudden, all the work goes away. So being very careful behind that. And then the the other thing that you said is, uh, and I know that's something that me and you have talked a lot about is, is culture. And you have two fabulous uh, assistants, if you will, uh, that I love both of them to death. And I think they're the perfect fit of your brand and your culture. Uh, so what makes scaling a business so hard? Because I hear this all the time. And I'm actually going to argue it's not hard. I, I will I'll make that argument all day. Um, it, it's it's not necessarily easy, but it's definitely not hard. But the I talk to agents all the time and, and business owners and they're like, hey, I'm comfortable where I'm at. I'm making X number of dollars a year. I don't really want to go any further. And number one thing that I hear is I don't want to manage people because growth typically takes forms of leverage and people. And my come back to that is, you know, well, then hire somebody to do that for you, right? Because that's what hiring is all about is finding out what are you really good at and then everything else hire out, right? That's the ultimate thing for leverage. Um, so what for you uh, makes scaling hard, whether it's, you know, true that this is the hard part or just things that are kind of missed? 
I think it's interesting what you just said, Matt. People say, well, I don't want to manage people. And you said, well, then hire somebody to do it. Okay. So what you just did there is you coached and mentored them on something that they had never thought of before. So that's why that just goes back to why it's so important to have somebody that's saying, hey, you know, understand your big why uh, and they understand your big why and where you're trying to get. And then they're saying they're helping you overcome some of those roadblocks. Cause I would say the majority of things are mental roadblocks that we have created for ourselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. From personal experience, I'm really bad at releasing control. I'm a control freak. Um, I come by it. Honestly, my dad is too. And so, you know, I, I want to just do it all myself. And as you scale, you have to train and develop people to do those things. You, you, what I constantly tell myself is, is it in my top 20%? So, and there's that 80, 20 um, rule of thumb, you know, I need to get rid of 80% so I can continue to grow that 20%. And so I ask myself, Hey, is this paperwork that needs submitted by 5 PM part of that 20% or do I need to give that to my transaction coordinator? Um, nine times out of 10, if I'm feeling overwhelmed and burnt out, it's because I'm trying to control everything. So I think that's a huge part of scaling. It's hiring the right leverage and then training them and then trusting the training and releasing control. They're going to fail. They're going to mess up. You just take those opportunities as lessons, train, develop. And then eventually, I mean, I can't I can't even remember what it was like to not have an executive assistant and transaction coordinator. Like, how did I do all of that? Like, there's so many things that they just cover for me to allow me to now train and develop somebody new. So, you know, I, I think there's some roadblocks there that are, but I would say they all go back to mental roadblocks that we've created for ourselves. Um, and know that, I mean, and I think sometimes people just be like, I'm comfortable where I'm at. And maybe that's okay. Maybe that's, They've established the life that they want to live by design, right? And they are comfortable there. Um, so for me, I know I wasn't. I want this great big life. I want, um, I have so many goals and so many things I want to achieve. And this legacy that I want to leave is so big. Um, I need really good people that are around me and I'm going to have to scale my business to make that possible. So knowing, you know, knowing where you want to go, I mean, some people just aren't cut out for it, but if it is something you're wanting to do, surround yourself with really good coaches and mentors, because there are going to be those roadblocks that come up and you're going to need someone to say, that's okay. Here's how you can do this. Here's another thought process and another way around it. Yeah. I love what you said about the 80, 20 principle, by the way, uh, you know, if you're not familiar, if you're listening to this and you're not familiar with what that is, it's basically 20% of your activities generate 80% of, of your results. And uh, that if we can stay in our 20%, there's a unique abilities assessment that you can do. Uh, that is, is fantastic. I just uh, went through it with my whole leadership team. Um, and we, we basically breaks down what do you do really well and gives you energy. Cause I'm super big on energy as most of you all know now, by, by now, but uh, what do you do well and gives you energy? And that's like, you label that at you. So let me back up. You list out everything that you do for the entire day, week, month, however long you're doing this exercise, like to the detail, every single thing. Next to each one, you either sign it a you, meaning that's my unique ability. It gives me energy. This is my passion. This is what fuels me. This is what I'm really good at. You assign it an E, which means you're exceptional at it. You're really good at it, but maybe it doesn't give you energy. Like everybody in the world might think this is the greatest thing that you do, but for you personally, it's just, it's not like fulfilling, right? And then uh, you have the next one is a C, which is confident, meaning that you get to go, you go through and you do it. And it's, it's one of the requirements Environments, but it doesn't really give you energy and you're kind of just doing the bare minimum because you know that you need to do it. And then the last thing, if I remember correctly, is an I. Um, and those are the things that you're like, I just avoid those. I'm not going to do that. Like, that is not me. Like, these things are the things that drain me. And when you go through that exercise, the unique abilities, the use in particular, and then some of the ease also, that's your 20%. Everything else, figure out how to leverage out. And if you want to scale really fast, the best that I know in the business, as Rachel and some others, they stay in their unique seat, their genius seat. They're in the right seat on the bus and they have everybody else that's on the bus with them in their genius seat also. And whenever you go through that exercise, you take all those, those C's and those I's 
figure hire somebody to do that. And you will go so much faster when you do that. And, and you also see where your energy stays higher, your stress levels feel better. I know for me personally, like you said, if I'm in my 80% and those things that are, are my C's and my I's, I feel like my stress is tenfold higher than when I'm in my, my genius seat and I'm doing those things that are bringing energy to me. So I love that. Love that. So what, yeah, what strategies uh, did you use to make your business grow that maybe we haven't already mentioned, if any? Um, I mean, one of the things I would definitely, you know, outside, we've covered a lot, right? So one of the things that I don't think we've touched on too much is that social media aspect of a business, that branding. Um, I, I think that creating a really clear picture of your social media and, and these days, like um, I was I was in a training not re just recently ago and they said, each of us is a brand, you know, online now. Um, we represent a brand when we make a post. And unfortunately that is the truth. I, and so being really clear with your social media branding and what, um, what you're trying to say um, and, and who you're trying to represent yourself to. So that was one of the things, you know, I do a lot with social media um, and I, I have plans to do what, a lot more. I don't, I don't do as much with it as I really should. So I think outside, you know, we've talked about evaluating, planning, leverage, leading with revenue, but um, that would be one tip. You know, if you're looking to really push yourself Sit down, take a look, a really hard look at your social media. Know that it is not just a fun place to post. Um, you are putting it's out there who you are. Yes, everyone, and, and we all spend, um, I am very embarrassed to tell you how much time I, my phone updates me on Sundays, how many average hours I spend on my phone a day. Of course, as a real estate agent, I'm always on it, but even worse, how, mu how much time I spend just on Facebook and Instagram. So that is like your biggest opportunity to put yourself out there in front of people. So think really carefully about that brand and, and who you want to represent yourself as. Let me tell you something about a month ago. I was late to the game on this, but about a month ago, I discovered TikTok. I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's huge. You're seeing how many hours, like it is the ultimate time suck. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but like when yes. I'm laying in bed at night, like I'm just scrolling through video after video after video. But what, you know, what's really kind of stuck out of my mind as you're telling me that story is like, I'm getting these people's branding. And so on TikTok with the algorithms, and it's just like this on Facebook and Instagram, like it tailors to the things that you spend the most time looking at, the things you like, the things you comment on, the people, they're going to resurface, right? So it's just like, you know, we talk about becoming top of mind in business. And then once you become top of mind, how do you stay top of mind? Social media works the same way. It's looking at the topics that you're, you're constantly following, the things that you're liking, the people that you're liking, the comments, things like that. And that it's identifies those people as top of mind. It keeps those people showing up in your newsfeed. So something to think about with your business and branding and social media is, you know, what story am I telling? So I, I go back and look at the things that I posted. Is this, is this who I want to be? And uh, the business owner that I want to be portrayed online? Um, is this part of my brand, so to speak? And then the second thing behind that is, how much engagement am I having? And meaning that when somebody yeah. comments, am I going back and talking through it? And, and, you know, I heard this one time, it was like a like is like a high five and a comment is like a hug. So the more that you can like and comment yeah. on people's pages, the more they're going to see your stuff as well in order to help you be able to build your brand. Absolutely. So, so let's say that you are my mentor. And uh, you were going to help me scale business and not just me, just anybody. What would be, you know, what would you tell me if we were just sitting down on this and let's say I was in that five million dollar position and I wanted to get to where you're at in, the, in that 15 million and, and this year, 30 million dollar position. What, what would you say? Two things. I would really help you dig in and find your big why and, and keep going back. So the process of that is, okay, so why are you in business? Well, I want to make money. Okay, but why do you need to make money? Well, I need to make money to support my family. Well, why do you, I mean, but outside of that, obviously you can make money anywhere. So why specifically real estate? Drill down to where it's at that bottom. For me, it's that legacy piece. So I really want to leave a legacy for my kids. I, I When I die, 
I don't want to just be another person that's gone. I want people to remember what I left behind and the impact that I had on people. So that, you know, finding that big why. And the second thing that my real estate coach did for me, one of the very first activities, she said, I want you to take a full day off. And I was like, that's counterintuitive. I'm not growing a business, taking a day off. Well, she had me take a tire day off and she had me go and create a roadmap to where I was trying to go and drill it down to literally like the very minutest um, details, right? So it was like, okay, I want to have uh, the number one real estate team in Hardin County, okay? So that was my initial goal. And how am I going to get there and when? And so thanks to Kelly Williams, there's already a roadmap to how that happens, but she encouraged me to drill it down even further and deeper and deeper until it literally was a step-by-step map to getting there. So I think if I were to sit down with you, those are the two things. So, and, and both of those things kind of go hand in hand with hiring that coach, finding that mentor. I sound like I'm like pro- promoting maps coaching, but I'm really not. I just am talking from my personal experience. One of my fellow agents, Cody popped his head into my office one time, and this was back a year and a half ago. And he was like, you know what? I just got a maps coach and it's amazing. Like it's really changing my business. And I remember being like that, you know, another thing that I don't need. Remember that whole surrounding yourself with like-minded people. I was like, great. Another thing that I don't have money for and I don't have time for. I was in the middle of a divorce. Like the last thing I thought I needed was a maps coach. And he couldn't have been more perfectly timed. I was going through the worst time in my life. And that maps coach came in and not only helped me personally, but like took my business at a point where it really should have suffered and probably like fallen off a little bit. And instead of that, it just went straight through the roof. Right. So, you know, I think those are three things. I know you asked for one, but I would really figure out any hard days where you're going to have to pull out that why and remember it make a clear roadmap and get somebody to, to, to walk you through that map. So I get, I'm in a fortunate position that I get to coach a lot of people on, on business and, and that turns into life coaching from time to time. And um, one thing that I identified with, cause that's the same thing. Like that's what I coach you is mindsets, habits, and skill. Like first you gotta, you gotta believe it in order to be able to achieve it. Then you have to create the habits that lead to success. And then it's all about the skill set that you have of knowing your particular industry or, or what you do in order to be the best in your business, like be learning based technology enhanced. Well, the, the, I always start with that question is why are you doing what you want to do? And I found that a lot of people struggle to go really deep on that question. You know, they go from, you know, swimming on top and I'm trying to get them down to scuba diving super deep so yeah. i came up with a series of questions to ask whenever you have this and, and this might this might help anybody out there struggling to find that big why's you know when you first establish hey you know why are you doing this then say why is that important and answer that question mm-hmm. and then say okay if you achieve that what will that do for you answer that question now you just repeat those two questions three times so now you have the new answer. So like if I was to go through this, we'll say, well, I'm selling real estate. Well, why is that important to you? Well, because I want to make money. And why is it, what would that do for you when you start to make money? Well, it provides financial freedom so that me and my wife can can do the things that we want to do and take care of our children. Well, well, what why is that important to you? And it's because, well, if I'm being honest, like I didn't have that growing up and I want to provide a different lifestyle for, for my kids. And, and what will that do for you? And it said, well, it makes me have a sense of accomplishment inside of, of this crazy world that we live in. And, and why is that important to you? Well, because the way I grew up wasn't ideal. And I had, you know, I, I was, you know, I had tough situations that I went through as a child. And I don't want anybody to go through that and say, well, what will it do for you if, if you can help change other people's lives? And that's how I went about doing this. And it was like, oh, wow, it's real estate is a gateway to changing lives. And that's my Absolutely. big, and it's just through asking those series of questions is what I discovered who I am and who I want to be. So, so I love that. And then the other thing is days off, by the way, you owe me a vacation. I haven't forgot. <laughs> I uh, do. But- yeah, so that's so that's important because that's something that like me and her talk about is like time off because a lot of times when you're there's a difference between working 
in your business and working on your business. And that's part of why your coach probably told you to take that day off. Why I always call you. I'm like, hey, I haven't seen any vacation scheduled this quarter. You know, what's going on? But, you know, when we're away from the business is when we can do without interruption, without distraction. And maybe we're in this beautiful scenery. That's when we can do a lot of our best thinking and we get to work on the business a little bit. And sometimes we just need that escape to, to avoid burnout. Although I would argue that no time away from what you do will help you prevent burnout. It's the way you're doing your business when you're in the business is causing the burnout, not how much time you're spending away from it. Instead, spend time away so that you can get clarity, think, and then in turn grow behind that. So I love those things. And I'll be looking forward to hearing what vacation you're scheduling by the end of the week, Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I'll get that for you. All right. So here, here's, the, here's the toughest thing to do is take all this. And we've unpacked a whole lot. And we have tons of great information and shared a lot of principles and models that, that help you scale. If our listeners could walk away with only one thing, one tip, one strategy, one piece of advice in order to be able to scale any type of business, no matter if it's real estate, not real estate, anything along those lines, what would be your one tip you would get, leave people with? If you're start, if you're in the startup phase or if you're in the scaling phase, there's somebody that's already been there and done that and can help guide you through it. You've got to attach yourself to a coach or mentor that can give you that roadmap that can help you problem solve. Find yourself someone who is wiser than you um, that can help you uh, through that process. I'm going to ask you to be a little vulnerable here real quick. We didn't script this one either, so I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. When okay. You hired, when you first hired your 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 coach for your business, was there ever a time that you questioned that move? And then tell us a little, if there was. I don't know if there was or wasn't, but if there was, what yeah. what was that like? Was there ever a time where you you know you were just like, is this the right thing for me to do? I don't think there was. You know, there was maybe a minute. You know, I was in the middle of the biggest financial change in my life when I hired her. And there was a moment where it was like, can I afford this? It was never a question of can, is she, is she meant it make a benefit to me? It was a, can I financially afford this? But then what came to me is I cannot financially afford to not have her. It was like, I will forego some of the other things that I once thought were necessities. I stopped getting my nails done, maybe, you know, postponed some hair appointments because now where I'm at, it would never have happened without her. So at no point did I question her investment in me and whether that was necessary. It was literally, but it, it quickly answered itself. I could not afford to not have her uh, coaching and mentoring me. So no, uh, it's the best thing I ever did for myself. I was, I, you read my mind. I was, I was hoping that's where you were going to go because I know you got a fantastic coach. So I know I wouldn't question that, but a lot of times the people aren't willing to invest in themselves is where I, I was hoping we would go with that. And you nailed it is you have to be willing to invest in yourself and pour into yourself first before you can pour into others. And if we're not filling our own bucket, whether it be, you know, emotionally, but also intellectually or, and all the other spiritually and all the other different ways, how can we expect to do all those things for other people, especially in a growing and scaling organization? So you absolutely nailed that one. Um, thank you for tossing me that softball. Uh, so uh, <laughs> no, this has been a really great episode. Uh, you know, I, I really do um, appreciate your business and and everything that, you know, a lot of times she tells people that, that you know, I've helped her grow her business, but she's helped me just as much. Um, and it's these types of conversations is why I wanted to kind of um, let, let all of our listeners get to listen to you and, and, and draw from your experiences. So if you have any interest in scaling your business, um, maybe you're looking to get into real estate because I believe you're hiring on your team. Is that correct? Yeah. I so am. Yeah. So tell I people, you know, if they're interested in kind of getting in this journey and, and having more discussions with you, how would they reach you? Um, so on my cell number, 270-401-2801, of course, feel free to stop by the Keller Williams office here in E-Town. I'd love to see you. I think, you know, if you did, if you were interested in getting into real estate, I would love to meet you and just talk to you about how it has literally changed my life. Um, and if, maybe if you just are looking at another startup, I'd love to be a part of helping coach and mentor you. So I'm in that position now and I'm, I'm excited to invest in other people like you, Matt, and my coach and, and my dad and all these other people have invested in me. So if I can be of any help, please reach out to me. I'd love to work with you. 
Hey, paying it forward is what it's all about. So be sure to join us next week on my Mindset Monday. Next week, I actually have a special guest who happens to be one of my business partners. And we're going to talk all about energy and, and what is energy and how do you control the energy around you? So Rachel, thank you so much. It's been such a blessing to have you on today. And for everybody else, have a fantastic week and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Matt. See y'all. Bye.